last episode we were checking out the case as well as, well, masking it off, painting it, and making it look all pretty like, or at least pretty like for me anyway. Now, this episode is going to be water cooling, we're going to be doing the hard piping, showing you how to do it, and my key tips, so stick around. <laughs> Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up-to-date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. Alright, so uh, welcome to episode 3. So, we've obviously got the painter case, um, I'm still considering uh, bits and pieces to do for it, um, as uh, the, the video that you will uh, have watched last Monday um, only came out yesterday for me, so I've only got kind of a couple of your comments and stuff like that, but uh, I'm going to be testing out uh, water cooling, uh, I'm going to try and do some test bends. Uh, I don't necessarily have the uh, specific recommended equipment, so I'm going to be trying out how I think I can do it, and then if I can't do it that way, I will go out and get a proper kit for it, but uh, well, it's kind of, it, this episode is probably going to be more of a PSA of how not to do hard, cool, uh, hard pipe water cooling rather than uh, anything else, but uh, yeah, either way, hope you enjoy it, and uh, well, we'll see what happens. So if you didn't guess, I uh, cleaned out the case, took out all the masking tape, and I'm now fitting the radio, uh, the reservoir. Now the key thing with this is that the way the master case works, it has a couple of holes, um, like little holes, sort of screw sized holes, for where the drive cage is mount, and that fit exactly the hole for the uh, reservoir mount, which is awesome. Only thing is the graphics card is kind of blocking the bottom one, um, so I'm actually not going to be uh, you know, using one there, I'm just going to be using the strength of the hard pipe and the top one. So as you can see, the pump, which obviously isn't currently sort of connected, but I plan on uh, drilling it in down the bottom. Um, this right angle joint is almost at a perfect height for this, um, let me move it around, there we go, for uh, this outport here. So if I get a hard pipe uh, straight there uh, and then block off the two ports that are at the bottom with the stoppers and block off the one at the top because uh, this one's going to be my in port and this one will be the out port uh, of the reservoir um, and that being the in port of the pump. Uh, it should fit almost perfectly and I can effectively adjust the length of the pipe by just moving the pump backwards and forwards depending on how I want the uh, out of the pump to go out and along which will be from the front. Uh, so that's amazing, that, that's worked out way better than I thought it would. So we've run into the first of what I assume is going to be many um, issues. So first of all, uh, I've thrown in the radiator with a couple of sort of placeholder fans at the top um, and I found out that the radiator does rather heavily interfere with the height or how high the reservoir can go. Now I've thrown in the stoppers except for just taking one out because um, instead of the idea that I had a minute ago which was to use this as my out towards the radiator um, uh, and then have it as effectively a straight pipe. Technically speaking I can still do that but it would actually have to go uphill to the radiator which, uh, to the pump sorry, which I've heard is quite bad and rather not recommended. So my thought was um, if I have it come out of the bottom port instead, so obviously this is the in and this one's blocked off so this is the out so you've still got the diffuser working well, but um, if it comes out of the out port with a right angle fitting, um, let me just uh, attempt to put it in and show you what I mean. Um, it should, I should still be able to keep the pump in the exact same place, which is obviously really nice. 
um, but it just means I can, in theory, make it all work without having to, you know, break stuff or completely move it around. Um, let me. Just a quick side note for anyone who does buy the uh, Phobia UC2 um, water cooling block. Uh, the way you mount it, you don't actually get a backplate with it. Uh, you get quite a few screws. I mean, if you have 2011, it's fairly self-explanatory. You get the small screws that screw into them on the board, um, and that's pretty much it. You put the, the stuff on top, uh, the sort of springs and washers on, you're fine. If you're using any other platform, though, what you do is you take these long screws. Um, I'm putting washers either side, but, you know, that's uh, kind of probably personal preference to the extent, and you put them from the back through the motherboard, um, so you're basically just using the motherboard to support it, although it's not as if it's exactly a big heavy cooler. Um, so as I said, I'm putting a washer on, and then they come with these uh, just very small M3 nuts that go on top. Um, you screw those all the way down so that the screws are sticking up into the case uh, and then you put the uh, metal washer on, uh, or you put the cooler on, you put the metal washer on, you put the spring on and then you use these uh, easier to sort of screw down um, screws to hold it in place. Uh, I didn't actually realise this and I was trying to screw on the CPU cooler from the other side so putting the, the screws from the uh, inside the case through and it was sticking through quite far and uh, it was basically just pretty terrible but um, just wanted to, to let you know as I said this video was probably going to be more of a PSA than anything else um, and I guess it's turned out to be one so uh, yeah I'm going to finish off with this. So a quick guide on how to hard pipe water cool. First things first, make sure you order double the amount of pipe you think you need. If you think you're going to need two meters or two tubes, honestly it is seriously worth buying four. Now I thought I was going to use about two, um, so I ended up getting three, which obviously breaking my own rule, but you know, first time being a beginner I'm sharing my experience, but uh, it actually worked out quite well. I do still have a, a decent amount of pipe left, it's probably half of uh, the second one, uh, the half of the third pipe, so yeah, kind of cut it a bit close with a couple of mess ups, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get on. So the first thing you need to do is cut the pipe to the rough size that you're going to need. I generally just eyeballed it all um, and then added a couple of centimeters on to whatever I thought I needed. So if you think you're going to need 10 centimeters, cut for 12, and then it's better to you know be a bit long and have to sand it down than to be short and have to redo the entire pipe just because it's a couple of uh, millimeters or centimeters short. Uh, now the key thing you're going to definitely need is this silicon insert, you can get them from aqua tuning and people like that as well, uh, or overclockers depending on you know who you fancy buying from, or anywhere else in the world, just check, uh, you know, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if you can't find one, but uh, yeah, you're also going to need a heat gun, um, some sandpaper and a little hacksaw to be able to cut the tubing. And uh, yeah, once you've cut the tubing, make sure to sand the, the outside lip and the inside lip and make sure that the face of the tubing that you just cut is kind of nice and flat as that won't make for a very good seal if it isn't. Now, the key thing for actually bending it is keep your heat gun on a low setting and just very gently and very, I guess, patiently heat up the piece or the, the section that you want to bend. So um, the way you kind of decide where a bend is is where you heat it most. Uh, that's going to be the sort of center of your bend. And honestly, just uh, go slow with it. Um, because if you heat it too much, heat it too fast, it will bubble up uh, and then you'll also get kind of expand, expansion bits and it just won't, won't look good, it won't work and it won't bend and you'll get lips and uh, it just won't be that great. So just be careful, um, you know, kind of slow and steady and uh, yeah, just kind of once you put the silicon insert into the tubing, start heat the, heating the specific area you want to bend. Um, once you've got it to a decent temperature, just keep trying it every now and again to see if you can move it. If you can move it, but not that easily, give it a little bit more heat all around and then move it again and you should be fine but if you move it and you know it goes really quickly and that sort of like you know, really easily then you do not need more any more heat on that um just you know sort of bend it and hold it in place until it sort of sets a little bit um let it cool down you can put it in water if you want i personally let it let it air cool um but uh yeah just let it sort of set and that sort of thing and then you're uh, you're all good now for me i did the uh, the first production piece i did because i used a cut off sort of a 10 centimeter piece or so uh, to use as my test bend which by the way i recommend highly do cut a, cut a piece of your tubing off first and do a couple of test bends to make sure that you're comfortable with different angles and all that sort of stuff and actually you know doing the tubing 
um, and uh, yeah, just make sure you, you're, you're happy with it. But um, yeah, so the first one I did was the bottom of the reservoir to the pump, which actually worked really well and I was very happy with it. The compression fittings that I was using um, seemed to be holding up nicely. And uh, yeah, we're also, uh, the second one I did was from the VRM to the radiator at the top. That was actually really hard to attach because the, the, the motherboard and the radiator are obviously two fixed pieces and the tubing is a straight, you know, kind of piece. So it was actually pretty hard to sort of get on, but um, yeah, I did. And the next one I did was from the pump to the graphics card. Um, after that, I did try to do from the graphics card to the top radiator, but I messed it up. So I ended up reusing that piece for the CPU water block, which was pretty awesome as it kind of worked out really well. Um, and then I did, I think it was from the, gra the front radiator to the reservoir, and then the uh, reservoir to the, uh, or sorry, from the front radiator to the CPU block, and that pretty much completed it. Now, uh, if you've got any questions on bending or, you know, hard pipe water cooling, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, and I will try and answer them as best as I possibly can. But uh, here's my sort of conclusionary piece. All right, so, uh, well, that's kind of it. I mean, we've got the pump connected to the graphics card, graphics card to radiator, radiator to VRMs, VRM to CPU, CPU to front rad with a bit of bubbling, um, front rad to reservoir, reservoir to pump, and that's pretty much the, the circuit. Now, as I said earlier, um, this is going to be the end of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, but um, uh, I can't uh, currently uh, fill it and leak test it as the fans go up the front, uh, up the top, and uh, on the front, but they're not necessarily uh, you know, needed right now, but um, the fans that are going to go up here aren't here yet um, and they won't be here until next week, so uh, I need to be able to remove the radiator, which means we're going to need to remove this one and this one um, and then take it out and then put them back on. But uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see um, if it all works and doesn't leak and stuff like that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it did leak, um, but uh, of course, fingers crossed, let's hope not. But uh, yeah, so hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, feel free to leave a like. If you didn't, or you think I'm an idiot, or you, uh, you know you haven't learned anything from this, feel free to hit the dislike button. But let me know what you think uh, or why you did dislike it in the comments down below. Um, but feel free to subscribe if you feel like you've learned a few bits and pieces about hard, how to hardline what's cool. And uh, yeah, feel free to comment what you uh, you have actually learned in the comments down below. Other than that, check out some of our videos, which uh, depending on where I've been moved to, are somewhere. Um, also check out Yoyo Tech if you want to pick up some of these pieces and also thank you to Yoyo Tech for letting me use the uh, hard pipe bending kit which I'm going to be returning in uh, a couple of minutes. Um, I don't have a watch on so I don't know I was looking at my wrist <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, crazy day. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.